good evening. Here's some information about IRs, a couple of problems, and uh, where peaks are and all. The first two pages here are the different areas where things show up. We have the bonds to hydrogen above 2800. We have the carbonyls about 1700. And then below 1600, we have the single bond and all of the fingerprint region. And the most important part of the fingerprint region is the the aromatic, where aromatic rings show up. And in an IR, here, let me get a bigger point. Spectra. The easiest way to think about it, they go roughly from 600 to 4,000. And the area from 2,800 to 4,000 is bonds to hydrogen. Okay, now at 3,000, there's always a peak at 3,000 because this, we're talking about organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is a carbon-hydrogen. Molecules with carbon-hydrogen bonds, they're all over the place, okay? So we'll always have a peak there. That was not very helpful. More helpful ones are the things besides that, but we can use that big peak at 3,000 or the peak at 3,000 whether it's big or not so big, as a help means to use it in the spot where 3,000 is. So these are all bonds to hydrogen from about 2,000 to 2,200 are triple bonds, and really there are only two, carbon-carbon or carbon-nitrogen. And in all of IR, the bigger the peak, the bigger the difference in electronegativity. So if you have a really deep peak, you have a big difference in electronegativity in the two atoms. Whereas if you have a really small peak, you don't have much difference in electronegativity. So of the two in the triple bond region, the CN would be much bigger than the, the CC one. Okay, And then below 2,000, between 1800 and 1600 is single bonds, carbon oxygen, carbon carbon, carbon nitrogen. You don't see those very often, but they're all gonna be somewhere in this region. And then of those, the carbon oxygen ones are gonna be the really strong ones and so on and so forth. And then below 1600, are all the single bonds. So we have bonds to hydrogen above 2,800, 22 to 2,000 roughly, triple bonds, 18 to 1,600 roughly, double bonds, and then single bonds below 1,600. And it'll always be that way. So if you see something in the, say, 2,100, it's gotta be a triple bond between two atoms. So here's a problem and if we look at it, we see the 3,000 peak. And yes, the numbers aren't that great. But when we look at these on this page, we see the 3,000 for both of them. So this one has this peak that is very easy to spot. That is compound A the alcohol because of that peak right there. We don't have to look anymore. Okay, then spectra one has these two peaks at 1700 and 1600 ish. A big peak, a little peak. They're both double bonds. So one is a carbon oxygen double bond, the big one. One is a carbon carbon single bond, the small one. So we look at all of these and see where do we have a carbon carbon double bond. The only two that have a double bond are com or E and F. E is a carboxylic acid. This is not a carboxylic acid, so this has to be compound F. It has to be the carboxylic acid with the double bond in C is the last two. So of these, the ketone and the ester, those are two that are very hard to 
spot the difference of because neither one has anything really outstanding above 1600 to differentiate between the two stars and ketones. So the ester is D and the ketone is to the next page and we see two carboxylic acids. The carboxylic acid is the really big one that goes from 2500 to 3500 all the time covers up a lot of the CH stretch and it also has that carbonyl stretch at 1700. So those two peaks make the carboxylic acid. So then we have in spectra 4 the little peak. So spectra 4 it has to be E the other one with the carboxylic acid without the double bond. And then we're down to the <clears throat> ketone and ester. So all we can do is look at the carbonyl of both and look down in the single bond region for some help and see which one has the bigger peak <clears throat> down around 1200. So compound 6 has bigger peaks down here at 1200. It better be the, key, the ester and the ketone should be number 5. If we look at the carbonyls of both of them and see which carbonyl is higher, we see this one is closer to the, the 1800 there, the black blob that you can't read, <clears throat> but it's much higher than this one is. And esters are a little bit higher in D. So this is the compound D and this is D. Now, when we look at a, a problem, we want it in IR. You don't want to look long at it. You want to look at it and spot the most important things and go on from there. So if we look at the first set here, we see 1740 and the big peak down there. So it's probably an ester. So which ones are esters? A, F. Those are the only two esters. It's not an aldehyde because it has, doesn't have the two peaks at 27, 2800. It's not an acid. It doesn't have the giant peak here. It's not an amide. Carbonyl would be at 1650. And there is no double bond. So it would be right here. So it can't be any of those. So it's either A or F. Now A has the phenyl ring in it. And if you have a phenyl ring in something, you'll have four little peaks right there and two down here at 7 and 750. We have none of that in this, so this has to be F for our unknown, or for the answer. It can't be A. As I said in A, the monosubstituted aromatic ring show the four little peaks right here, so the second one has to have an aromatic ring in it, so that rules B out. It rules F out. It rules E out. Now we have this here, which is an alcohol. That rules out C and D, so our answer has to be A. And we see the two peaks at 7 and 750 for the mono substituted aromatic ring. For the next two here, we see a carbonyl at 1714 and nothing else in the spectra. So there's no double bond, there's no aromatic ring, there's no aldehyde. So when we look at these three ketones, we see two in a ring and one straight chain. The two in the ring, if you have a carbonyl in a small ring, it ends up being a lot higher. It'd be about 1750, 1740, 1750, 30, 40 units, 20, 40 units higher than normal. So it can't be these two, it has to be F. When we go on to the next problem, we see a 744 down in the aromatic region of 6 to 900. A 750 is a 1-2 disubstituted ring. We see the peaks in here that point towards some sort of aromatic ring. We see these two peaks here that say it has to be a primary mean. A is not primary. D's not primary, C doesn't have an amine, F has an alkene, not an aromatic ring, and B has an alcohol, but no aromatic ring, so the answer has to be E.
next one we have an alcohol so only alcohol is that one because it's not aromatic we have the aromatic alcohol but there's no no two peaks down here then the next one has the 27 2800 it's an aldehyde it has the big peak para substituted it has to be that one the next one has a triple bond it does not have the terminal triple bond so it's not a a b is a double bond c is an alcohol not an alcohol d is an alcohol e we've never covered so it has to be f and here's our para substituted peak for f and yes i know what you're thinking you're all saying but that triple bond peak is awful small and yeah for a cyanide it is smaller but it is a triple bond and it, it for matching wise it's the only one that works the next one is an alcohol here so we look and we see an alcohol b doesn't have an alcohol we see some possible aromatic type stuff here though the region down here, six to nine hundred, is awful messy, so it's hard to tell what we have. We don't have no aromatic ring there. It's not an acid. We don't have an amine peak. So is it either the alcohol in C or the alcohol in E? And if we look at these two peaks at fifteen and thirteen hundred, we see the nitro. So it has to be this one. The next problem we have. Carbonyl at 1740, so, but nothing else. No alkene, no aromatic ring, no aldehyde. There aren't two carbonyl peaks, and we don't know the acid chloride, so this one has to be the ketone. It's just up higher than we'd normally expect it because of the carbonyl and the small ring. The next one, we see no aromatic ring, no aromatic ring. It's not a primary amine, there aren't two peaks. It's not a primary amide. It's not a carboxylic acid. It's not a terminal acetylene. It has to be the NH, one peak here at 3200. This, the signs of a carboxylic acid, the only acid is this one. All the others aren't possible, so it has to be that one. And the last one, we have the two peaks at 32, 3400 primary nitrogen none of those are primary so then we look we see the big carbonyl peak it has to be this one because it's an amide not an amine and the next problem we see formula C8 H6 when we look at this we see this right here okay, C8 H6 8 carbons Double it and add two, 16, 18. Can hold 18. We have six on it, so we subtract it out. And that says we're missing 12 hydrogens. They come in pairs. We divide that in half. Our IHD is six. So our IHD is telling us there has to be a lot of, you know, six double bonds and rings, or pi bonds and rings in this molecule. Anytime this gets above four, the first thing you should think of is you have one aromatic ring. Okay, so at a bare minimum, that's six carbons and four or five hydrogens. So C6, We'll call it a mono-substituted look up here. And yes, we do see the two peaks for a mono-substituted in the IR. So that leaves us C2H, which two carbons. The aromatic ring was an IHD of four. That leaves us two. So this just has to be the terminal phenylacetylene. And this is our hydrogen that we're seeing in that peak at 3200. Okay, the next one is how do we differentiate these? The aldehyde would be 28 and 2700 because they both have the carbonyl peak. 
the alcohol would be the peak 3200 to 3600 the terminal acetylene would be the peak 3200 a nice sharp peak cyclohexanol would be an alcohol 32 to 3600 the acid would be that giant peak from 25 to 3500 and then of these two the amide carbonyl would be at 1650 and the amide NH2 would be two peaks at 32 and 3400. So here we have some horrible spectra to look at and in this we see in the first one we have a peak at 3200. The only one of these that's going to give a peak at 3200 is this one, the terminal acetylene. The next one has a 28 and 2700. It has a mono substituted aromatic ring and it has a carbonyl. So it's going to have to be the second to the last one. And then on these last two, the first, the third one does not have the two peaks of the aromatic ring. So it's going to have to be this one. And we see a ketone and the shoulder for the carbon carbon double bond we do. So this is cyclopentenone. And then the last one has the mono substituted aromatic ring, and we have to decide which of these two it is. So the carbonyl, where is our carbonyl? Is the ester where you'd expect it, or is it a lot lower than where you'd expect it? And if we look at that, it was high up in the 1700s, okay, about 1750, thereabouts. So if it were this problem with the carbonyl conjugated to the aromatic ring, it'd be 20 to 40 units lower. So it'd be about 1700. Whereas this one is not conjugated, it'd be where we would expect it. So this one, which is the last, based on this carbonyl being right where we'd expect it to be in the, the carbonyl region for an ester. Another problem, here we have the acid. Here we have just a carbonyl, so it's got to be the ketone. Here we have a triple bond. And here we have hydrogen to nitrogen, because we don't have a terminal acetylene. That's the only other thing that could look like that. So those are those. There is no alcohol in this problem. And then mass spec. In mass spec, we want to look for four things. Is the M plus odd or even? Okay, if it's odd, there's a nitrogen atom. Okay, and if it's odd, there's an odd number of nitrogen atoms. And in this class, in org one, for where we are, nitrogen is either one nitrogen or no nitrogen. There are no in-betweens. Okay, I don't need to go three or four nitrogens. Okay. Then the other thing which we won't do is part two. The size of the M plus can tell you how many carbons there are if you know exactly how many there are. But we don't aren't usually given that, so we don't know. The next one, the M plus two peak tells us if there's a sulfur, a chlorine, or a bromine. And that's because the M plus two atoms, the only ones with an isotope of an M plus two that's significant are sulfur, chlorine, and bromine. The sulfur 4.2 is a small enough one, which we don't have sulfur very much, so we won't have it very often. But chlorine is a three to one ratio in the M plus to M plus two, and we'll see some examples of this in a second. And bromine is one to one. So those are our choices for those. We won't do that res problem. But here is the problem that says for each of the following mass spec figure out what the molecular formula is. So we look at it the mass spec we look for the peak farthest to the right. Okay, And in that peak farthest to the right that's the weight of the molecule and we see the two peaks of equal intensity so that has to be a bromine so all we have to do is a little math, 156, 158, minus 79 or 81, that takes us down to 77, 
which could be six carbons and five hydrogens. So our formula for this one is C6H5Br. The next one we see a 156, 127, and a 29. There's not much fragmentation in this one, so there's not a lot going on. And really all there is is this 29 and this 127. So that tells us there is something in this molecule that doesn't fragment more than what we see. So what weighs 127 on the periodic table? Iodine. And so 156 minus 127 leaves us 29, which is going to be a C2H5 and ethyl, which is 29. So all this is is ethyl iodide, or C2H5I. The third one here, 90 or 92, there's a 3 to 1 ratio of the, the two peaks, so it has to have a chlorine in it. That gets us down to 55, 55 could be C4, 48, 7, 7 hydrogens to get us down to 0, so C4, H7, Cl. Now 4 carbons can hold 10. We have eight things, seven hydrogens and a chlorine, so we can, we're missing two, they come in uh, pairs, so this has an IHD of one. Okay, so while we can't give what the exact molecule is, we know there has to be either a double bond or a ring in whatever we would come up with for this problem. And the last one here weighs 115. 115 is a nitrogen. Subtract it out, we're down to 101. 101 can have either eight carbons, which weighs 96, which would leave us with five hydrogens to get to zero. So our formula of C9H5N doesn't make sense because that's way too many carbons for hydrogens. At most, it might be a one-to-one -one ratio, but you will never have a lot more carbons than hydrogens in any molecule you ever have in this class. So when you see something like that, the first thing you want to think of is, well, I need to get rid of some. start over from our 101. So from 101, instead of nine car or eight carbons of 96, we could go to seven carbons, which would be 84. That would be 17 hydrogens, or zero. So that would be C7, H17, N. Now seven carbons, double and add two, can hold 16. When we add a nitrogen in there, we add one to the number it can hold. So seven carbons in a nitrogen can hold 17. We have 17. In this one, our HD is zero. So this one would be C7H17N.